Okay, we're live in San Rafael, California, in the Bay Area, with Wild Care. Um, who's this little guy? So this is an orphan baby coyote that came into Wild Care's Wildlife Hospital. And what's happening right now is his uh, foster care mom, Jacqueline, is stimulating him to urinate and defecate. So we're going to watch that for a second while we talk about his story, and then we're going to feed him a bottle. So Wild Care is a wildlife hospital and nature education center. We treat about 4,000 animals every year in the wildlife hospital. And this little coyote, his situation is somewhat typical of the orphan babies that we admit into the wildlife hospital. He was heard crying down the hill from the home of some people in Fairfax, California. And they went to investigate because they'd heard him making noise, right? And they went down and found this little fellow, a tiny baby coyote with his eyes still tightly closed. His ears are still somewhat closed. And when they found him, he was very cold. Uh, he was making a lot of noise. He was crying. And he actually had some fly eggs in the corners of his eyes and in his little mouth. So that were, those were three things that indicated to the people that found him, and then they called Wild Care to confirm, confer, to confirm that he probably was orphaned. So the goal of everything Wild Care does in our wildlife hospital is to, <laughs> it looks so funny, is to treat the baby animals that come into us and get them healthy, and then uh, with as little intervention as possible from humans, raise them with members of their own species, get them wild and release them back into the wild. So this little guy came in, obviously orphaned. Um, again, he was very cold. Anytime you find a baby animal that's cold, you know that's a baby that needs help. Uh, he had some, you know, again, some insects crawling on him, that sort of thing. And these were all indications that something had happened to him, something had happened to mom, and he was an orphan. So he's been in care with us for about how long? A week and a half now? About a week and a half now, and he is just going to be, he's just getting to the point where his eyes are going to open. Baby mammals are born with their eyes and their ears tightly sealed shut, and for the different species, their eyes open at various ages. Do you uh, remember, Jacqueline, for the coyotes? 14 days on the dot. Okay, so for, when this little guy is 14 days open, uh, 14 days old, his eyes will open, and he will be uh, all of a sudden able to see. And at that point, we wouldn't be able to show him on film anymore, especially with an intelligent um, social animal like a coyote. It's very important to keep him with other coyotes, not with humans. We don't want him to become tame because of course the goal is to release him back into the wild as soon as possible. So he's having his bottle. How often are you feeding him now? Still every three and a half hours until his eyes open. My goodness. So is that 24 hours a day? Yes, 24 hours a day. So we were up all night doing this. <laughs> well, he's a good eater, at least. It's, it is amazing. So Wild Care, we're located in San Rafael, California, just north, north of San Francisco. And we have over 500 active volunteers in our volunteer team. And our volunteers do amazing things like take care of some of the orphan babies that you're going to see in this video today. So, But uh, you think about how exhausting that must be for poor Jacqueline here <laughs> to be feeding this little fellow every three hours, 24 hours a day. Pretty crazy. We've got a couple people asking what happened to the mother. So that is one of the things about orphan baby wild animals is you often don't know. So the people that found this baby said they had seen a coyote in the neighborhood, possibly carrying something in her mouth. So it's a possibility that that was mom and maybe mom was moving the baby, the, her, her litter of babies from one den site to another. That sometimes happens. Mom will decide that a den site's not safe or ideal. And so she'll move the babies from one den site to another. We didn't see her actually moving this little guy. We didn't see him get dropped or anything, but it's a good bet that she was probably moving her babies and who knows what happened. We don't have any idea, but at some point she must have dropped him or something. He must have gotten, you know, gotten dropped and, and, and rolled down the hill. Now, coyotes and other wild animals are amazing moms. So normally hearing him crying the way he was, I mean, the humans could hear him crying. So, you know, mom could too. Normally mom would come back for him. There would be no reason for her to leave him orphaned and crying. So we think something must have happened to mom. I don't know if she was hit by a car. You know, it, it, it's, it's impossible for us to know what happened to the mother coyote. But the fact was, this little guy was in pretty bad shape when we finally got him. He was very, very cold. Uh, again, he had fly eggs in his eyes and his mouth. He was crying loudly. And so um, we don't know what happened to mom, but we know this little guy's orphaned and he needs, needed some help. So 
but always a good question. Whenever possible, we like to reunite the babies with their mothers. We do that as much as we possibly can. <laughs> he no, says, where's my that. bottle? Uh, we have him on a slower nipple uh -huh. so that he won't aspirate but it means it takes longer for him to eat. So he gets a little frustrated. That makes sense, yes. Now, when you, uh, if you ever find an orphan baby wild animal, it's extremely important that the first thing you do is get them to a trained wildlife care facility like Wild Care. This looks like a fun thing to do, but the fact is wild babies are very, very, very difficult to raise. They are wild animals. They make, they would never make good pets. Um, and aspiration is something that's very much a problem with uh, bottle feeding orphan babies of any varieties. That's getting uh, the formula into their lungs and into their noses can cause pneumonia, can cause all kinds of problems. So uh, being trained to do this is something that all of our volunteers, all that, that, that training to do this is something all of our volunteers have that do foster care for their babies. Catherine asks, when will he open his eyes? So he opens his eyes exactly at 14 days. And we think he's probably how old now? 12 or 13? 13 days. Probably. 13 days. So it's probably going to happen in the next 24 hours. So this will be the last shot we really get of this guy. Once his eyes are open, we only want him to see the other coyotes with which he's being raised. Right. All right. And he uh, does okay. have a foster sibling. And he has a foster sibling. Okay, I think we're going to move on from Kyle. We're going to let him go back to bed. And we're going to move on to some baby squirrels. Let's see here. Lacey over here, give a little overview of our, uh, our team here. Lacey's fishing out one of her orphan squirrels. So this is an eastern gray squirrel. And he and his siblings came into wild care. Uh, they'd fallen out of their nest. Do you remember their story? Yeah, so he came in with another brother. Or chin twins, at least I do. And um, their injuries were consistent, at least his was, to um, a nest being destroyed or falling from the tree, um, tree removal. Um, came in with a lot of abrasions, dehydration. Um, he had a uh, fractured femur. Oh, yeah, he was the broken leg yeah. one, that's right. So he's doing very well right now. Um, femur is all good, all healed. Um, they're about uh, seven and a half, eight weeks. They're being fed about um, four times a day. Um, so no more night feeding. Yay, <laughs> that makes your life easier. And um, so they are gradually moving to larger and larger um, cages and also having less and less human contact. So. Yep. It's very important to always raise uh, wild baby, wild animals of any variety. To always raise them with their own species, and to uh, it, you know limit the amount of contact they have with humans. Obviously, when they're being fed like this, they'll have contact with Lacey. But as she just said, they'll be getting less and less time with uh, with humans and becoming more and more wild. And this is an eastern gray squirrel, um, and he's got really unique patterns on his belly. Um, He's got a chocolate chin strap underneath his chin, obviously, and then also some unique markings on his belly. Um, Very one handsome of, little guy. Yeah, one of three species. The others in the Bay Area elsewhere. Fox squirrel. We've got and the then, fox squirrel. We also have the western gray squirrel in the San Francisco Bay Area. Correct. Likes his formula. Should we do a little bird feeding in a second, for a second here, while he finishes up over here? Oh, this is a... What do we have here, Lucy? This is a baby California scrub jay. Um, probably fell from his nest. Uh, he's been in care with us for about two days now. He's a good um, eater. He is a very good eater. Um, and so these guys get, they eat a huge variety of foods. They eat insects. They'll eat, even the adults will eat nestling songbirds, um, other babies' eggs or other birds' eggs and things like that. Um, but you can tell he's primarily staying in his nest. He's just kind of started to explore, um, actually this afternoon, <laughs> uh, starting to kind of jump around and um, leave the nest a little bit as well. How old is he, do we know? Um, probably just a couple weeks old. <laughs> so you're doing what mom would do. She'd come in with a with her beak full of, be of, of delicious worms, food. delicious, tasty things, and that over his head, puts his face up and says, yes, feed me, please. Yeah. So we're going to cover up our Western scrub jay. We've got another tiny baby to show you that we're very excited about. He is uh, 
as yet, we consider him an, an we call him a UFO, an unidentified fledgling object. He is a tiny little guy, so we're not quite sure. We think he's a type of wren, correct? Um, yeah, so definitely in a small insectivore. And this guy was found on a driveway, uh, so probably fell from his nest. I know we had a couple windy days, um, and then the finder brought him right in. Well, he was still warm, and you can see he's been pretty consistently hungry. <laughs> um, and he's fed every 15 to 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes. Wow. So, Lucy, is it true that you can't put a baby bird back in the nest? It's not true. Um, so there is a myth that if you touch a baby bird that the parents can smell it and that they will not return or take care of the babies, and that's actually a myth. Um, and so in totally general, we true. do want to make sure they're healthy before we put them back in. Um, so if you're ever unsure, you can always bring it into a wildlife. Um, but we do uh, re-nests whenever we can. Yeah, and parent birds will absolutely take their babies back. I, we don't, I don't know why we all learned that growing up, but they absolutely will. Uh, wild birds are amazingly good parents. And so if we had been able to find this little fellow's nest, we probably would have been able to re-nest him easily, but we weren't, aware, we weren't able to find the nest. So he'll grow up in care at wild care. And we'll figure out what species he is pretty soon. I just love the fluff on top of his head <laughs> and his little bum. Days old at this point. Yeah, that's rather amazing. Excellent. Oh, and poop. Yep, just like any baby, we eat and then we poop and then we go back to sleep. <laughs> Excellent. Taking care of a, a baby bird like this is obviously a very, very big job for a very, very dedicated and experienced person. Unfortunately, Lucy has a tremendous amount of experience taking care of birds. Again, Wild Care's volunteers receive a lot of training before they do any hands-on care of the animals. And uh, it's, uh, oh, there we go. Good job. Our volunteers are amazing. They, uh, in addition to the foster care work they do, they also do a regular four-hour shift in our wildlife hospital uh, once a week. So that's up. All right, we're going to put him back in the incubator, and next we have some baby skunks to show you. Theoretically possible that we could get sprayed. That has happened to me filming before, and I don't think it's likely to happen this time. So these, and you, do you remember their story, Jacqueline? I do. So these babies, their mom underneath a concrete slab and there's a litter of six we split them between three of us to make it easier on some incubating since we all have so many foster babies in right there. uh mom was gone and a family heard them crying and waited for about a day and mom never came back so they went in and they they took the babies the other one's really jealous that this one's getting <laughs> fed <laughs> yep here she is yeah, same thing. Um, you know, it's like if you hear them crying, that's a good indication, but you want to give mom time to come back. And it sounds like they received good advice that to, to do that and, and see if mom was going to come back for her babies. And as with the coyote, we don't know what happened to mom. You know, a lot of things happen to urban wild animals in, in, in our, our human habitated, inhabited, inhabited areas. And so you never really know um, what the situation was that caused babies like these to become orphaned. But we're so glad that Wild Care is here with our amazing volunteers and our medical knowledge to raise these little guys to grow up to be wild. And they will be released back out into the wild. Now, a lot of people don't like skunks. I don't know how you can look at something like this and not like an animal like this, but I understand they can be a little smelly. So we always like to talk about the benefits that skunks bring to your backyard. So the first thing that they'll do is they love to eat slugs and snails. So if you have skunks passing through your yard, you will not have a problem with those pesky slugs and snails that eat your garden plants. So that's a real benefit. The other thing that they love to eat is rats and mice. So they will take care of rodents. Raccoons do the same things. So if you have raccoons and skunks in your area, you will have many fewer problems with rodents. So uh, skunks really do provide a great service. The other thing that people don't realize about skunks is that they don't really want to spray you. Um, Skunks have a, a they have to they have to generate the spray in their anal glands before they're able to spray again. So if a skunk were to use all of his spray on you or your dog, that means he's pretty much defenseless if another predator comes up. So we, we always tell people give the chance the skunk a chance to back away. He'd rather not spray you. He'd rather not use all of his defense mechanism on you if he can avoid it. And so give him a chance to back away, give him a chance to get away. And and, and there's every possibility that you and your dog won't get sprayed. So it's really uh Keep in mind that they, uh, they're they not out to get you. And, oh, we have our wonderful director of animal care, Melanie Piazza. Hey, Melanie, what have you been doing? Um, we've been dealing with 
dealing with a lot of new intakes in the hospital today is baby season, as everybody has probably heard. And um, unfortunately, folks are out trimming trees and cutting down nests and animals are across the streets and get hit by cars. So we're always encouraging people to make sure that they're not trimming trees this time of year and watch where you're driving. And if you find an injured or orphan animal that you call your closest wildlife rehabilitation hospital to get them the proper um, care that they need and to not feed them um, or take care of them yourself. Make sure you get them somewhere where they get the proper care they need and that the reason of it so they can be safely returned to the wild. Good point. There are many, many millions of domestic animals and shelters that need homes. So we always tell people to not keep wild animals at home. If you want a pet, go to your local shelter and adopt adopt somebody if you have wildlife, bring them to a wildlife rehabilitator or hospital so that they can be released to have the wildlife. Yep, um, absolutely. These guys deserve to go back to their wild lives. Sorry, Lazo, you had a comment for us? Yeah, I've got a question from Nita, who's on our YouTube page. Um, she wants to know, how young do they start to spray? That's a good question. How, lo how young do skunks start to spray, Jacqueline? Pretty soon after their eyes open. Oh, okay. These guys could spray if they wanted to, but because I'm feeding them, I don't think they will. <laughs> they start practicing and wrestling, and they'll accidentally kind of... <laughs> Um, but they don't intentionally spray until they get a little bit larger. Practice, little practice mm -hmm. squirts. So uh, having raising raising uh, orphan skunks in this situation can make your house a little smelly because they are practicing a little bit. But oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he could theoretically spray us now, but I think he uh, he looks pretty darn content right now. So I don't think we have to worry too too much. Don't uh, spray the hand that feeds you, I guess. Say again. Don't spray the hand that feeds you. And it feeds you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Get a look at how small he is. Yeah, that would be a mistake. Gotta be, gotta be nice to your, your formula provider. Oh, that's a sleepy skunk. So we have very specific formulas that we feed all of our baby mammals. There is actually a specific formula for squirrels, a specific formula for skunks. And it's very important to have that because that has the proper protein and fat balance for the individual animal that you're looking at. Um, it's, it's always a problem when people find a baby animal and decide to give that animal cow's milk. Again, another reason we say always bring in an orphaned animal to a, a wildlife hospital like wild care. But cow's milk, of course, is, is it comes from a cow, which is a big animal, and it's made for a calf, which is a really big animal. So there's, there's no real uh, benefit to a tiny little animal like this skunk to give it cow's milk. So we, uh, we really are very careful to give them the proper balance of nutrition while they're in our care. And as they grow up, they spend more and more time eating, uh, you know, exploring the foods that they'll find in the wild. And again, for skunks, that's going to be slugs and snails and insects and different types of meat and eggs and fruit and all of those things. Excellent. Thank you, Jacqueline. Okay. Oh, yeah. One more skunk question. So we'll let um, you put Nita, sure. Nita wants to know um, if skunks bite. Do skunks bite? Yes, they do. <laughs> they do. Um, it's not as bad as other animals that bite here, like raccoons, but um, they, they can definitely break skin, and they are rabies vectors. So if you are rescuing a skunk, be very careful and call. Yeah, call your local animal care. Um, and they do have teeth at this age, too. Speaking of raccoons, let's move over to our next baby here. This is an orphaned baby raccoon. Do you know his story, Rachel? It's a little girl, and she came from a bottle. Okay. She found, someone found her on their driveway, Oh. and she had her umbilical cord still attached. Oh. Um, in fact, it was wrapped sort of around her feet and, and needed some stitches to reattach it and um, antibiotics for her after that point. She was all by herself, so she was sent here with us for about 20 years has a sibling, not a sibling, but a litter mate now who is about five weeks old. Uh, and she's probably about three weeks old, just ready for her eyes to be open. Do you know what uh, what what day they open for what day raccoon eye baby eyes open? Twenty one days. Twenty one days. Yeah, it's interesting how the different species have different uh, different timing. I, the, the squirrels open theirs at four weeks. Uh, coyote is fourteen days. Yeah. This little girl be about used to about three weeks. Yeah, and they're very dependent on their mom. And she, she needs someone to stimulate her so she can urinate and 
Uh, she's fed every four hours. So right now, I'm feeding her at midnight and then getting up at six and feeding her again. Wow. It's working hard again to um, suck the formula out of it so she doesn't ask for it. Is such a problem with these animals. They can uh, inhale the milk so easily, and that causes all kinds of problems, as you can imagine. I love that you can already see the stripes on her little tail. Yeah, when yeah. she first came in, she really did not have stripes. Really? They weren't there yet because she was so tiny. She was a tiny little one. And again, you know, we don't know what happened with mom. It's uh, if, if, since she, this little one was so little, she was probably being moved for some reason what happened to mom and we don't know why mom didn't come back for her. Uh, we are very successful with reuniting baby raccoons with their moms when, you know, we know where the den is and we check, we take the baby in, check to see if the baby is healthy and then return the baby back, um, back to mom. And, they, and very often as with most wild animals, mom will take the baby back. I don't know why we all learned that wild animals wouldn't take their babies back, but mom absolutely will take her baby back. But uh, for these ones that end up, um, you know, it sounds like she had some uh, infection issues, her yeah. umbilicus, and, and, and actually had a little wound there. So we had to take care of her and give her antibiotics. So she'll stay in our care until she's ready to, until she's grown up and, and ready to be released. And her siblings, her raccoons in Sausalito down by the bay, mm. and her three of them, the mom came back and grabbed three and left one. Oh, how weird. So um, reunite definitely works, but it has to be done with trained people who right. know babies are healthy. And this one was not a candidate for yeah. reunite. We'll grow up at wild care and we will do everything we can to make sure she's healthy, make sure she's wild, and then release her back into the wild. I know, uh, again, some people, like with skunks, people are always, you know, a little, some people don't like raccoons, but um, these are some of the best rodent control that we have in our environment. Raccoons eat so many rodents and they really do a tremendous service for our neighborhoods doing that. And it's just a matter of us taking care of things like our garbage to prevent problems uh, uh, with wildlife. It's, it's entirely possible to have wildlife neighbors, have them do beneficial things for us keeping track of our garbage, our, you know, bird food, all of the different things that we have out that might cause problems and uh, keeping those away and then letting nature do what it does best, which is uh, balance, balance rodents and balance all the different populations. Um, <laughs> got another interesting question from Nita. Um, she wants to know, do wild animals that you rescue get vaccines like dogs and cats? You know, that is actually a very good question. And no, we don't vaccinate them. And the reason for that is that they are going back out into the wild population and you don't want to end up with uh, any possibility of diseases that are, that are, or any other problem with that. Um, do you know more about that, Rachel? They don't get the disease. They do get it at temper. Oh, we do do it at temper. Okay, I'm sorry. That's yeah, my mistake. They get uh, three shots. They get worms all the time. Yeah. The worms are, are a big issue for sure. Absolutely. A raccoon specific question from Catherine. She wants to know, is it true that raccoons use their hands like humans? Very much so. Yeah, raccoons are incredibly dexterous. They have the most wonderful hands. They have a tremendous number of nerve endings in their in their in their feet, and they have incredible an incredible ability to really use their hands very much the way we do. Um, they can climb. They can hold things. They can carry things. Really, a, a, an incredible amount of dexterity with those little hands. Laszlo, we are we are coming to an end here. My babies are all going to sleep. This little one's falling asleep, <laughs> sucking on Rachel's finger. It has been such a treat to have everyone viewing Wild Care and our wild babies. Thank you so much for paying attention. Yeah, thanks everyone for Any watching. Other, anything else you need from us? Uh, no. Um, Say again. No. Um, if anyone else is um, 